You know what is interesting? A lot of the tasks, activities, things you do at work are projects, even though most often you don't know that they are indeed projects. Now, this creates a bit of a problem, right? Problem for you. If you don't know what you have as a project, then obviously, how can you project manage it, right? I mean, so in effect, what you're doing is managing a project without project management, right? Make sense? Now, what is a project? A project is a temporary endeavor, right? To deliver a certain outcome, an output, right? And that outcome um, has, has boundaries around it, which we call the scope, right? It has a beginning, it has an end, it has a schedule, right? A budget, uh, money, right? And most importantly, a scope, right? Uh, and, and scope determines what you should and should not deliver. Now, when you don't apply proper project management, like even very basic, like very, very basic project management, the fundamentals of it, right, uh, to your projects, then a few things happen all the time. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, you get pressure from everyone around you, yeah? All your stakeholders, politics, quality issues, schedule demands, and most importantly, a lot of conflict of interest, right? Because conflict of interest is, is, is a symptom is a symptom of what happens when you're running a project but you don't know that it's a project and therefore you're lost, right? As a symptom, all the stakeholders start demanding more, right? They feel more entitled. Your clients, your suppliers, your managers, your peers, right? People report to you, your team members, because there's no approved racy matrix. You know, nobody knows who's the sponsor, who's the project manager, who is responsible, accountable, to be consulted, to be informed, right? This is the racy matrix, right? Um, I mean, you don't even have it, let alone get it approved, right? So when you don't do it, do you know what you get, right? Massive, massive pushback on every single step you take. You have every single step you take. Um, everybody pushes back. Um, and then you have to have a million of oh, alignment calls, you know, meetings and pre-meeting alignment. Oh, we have to align before the meeting, right? Let's loop that person in, this person in, and then he says this and he, you know, she says that. Oof, you're lost, right? You cannot implement a project this way. You'll get lost. And, um, yeah. You know what, what was interesting? Um, you know that uh, PMI, the Project Management Institute, uh, released its uh, study. Um, I read it recently, but I don't know how old it is. Um, they said in that um, study that 90% of the projects fail. I mean, I personally know they do too, and it's mostly because of what I just mentioned. Okay, now this effect. Hmm? Let me share with you another fact. Uh, I was a management consultant, right? As you know, um, with PwC Consultant, PricewaterhouseCoopers for so many years, and, and I've had over 200 projects uh, that I ran as project manager uh, for our clients. Uh, many different projects too, like different scope. And I'd say it's a 100% it's a success rate, right? Well, I'd say 100%, but I just came from an ayahuasca trip <laughs> from the jungle, so I wanna say it's a 90% success rate, right? I'm trying to control my ego. Um, so now why is that the case, right? Why is there such a big variance between the big four consultants and the regular companies, right? Even though, even if they are the biggest companies sometimes, you know, the biggest multinationals, you know, it could be Google, Coca-Cola, you know, you name it, Unilever, P&G, but the big four guys, KPMG, EY, Deloitte, and the best of them, PricewaterhouseCoopers, they have something different. Do you know what it is? It is all in the basics, guys. You know, it's really just in the basics. It's not the advanced project management methodologies, you know, really complex stuff. Absolutely not. Just the fundamentals. We apply a very strict, although a simple, yeah, simple to follow, methodology in a framework, right? And we do not steer off of that path at all, right? Methodology gives you the path. Do this first, and then do that, right? And then start with the charter. Right? They, then based on the complexity, a few questions, uh, do the detailed plans if you need to, you know, get it signed, do the process groups if you want to. Like it's, it's all there, it's just a map, just follow it, right? This is the biggest difference, it's all in the basics. Most people don't treat their work as projects and they end up skipping like absolutely all the necessary and must have steps, right? 
you start, what, what people do is this, you, they, they start creating a list, a task list, right, like a to-do list, thinking, you know, wow, you're doing a great job, you know, I'm, I'm doing a great job, I'm putting a few things together, I'm, you know, booking the meetings, I'm looking at our, like, shared calendar, right? You're not doing a good job, you're just a time bomb, right? Um, just a matter of time before you go off. Um, because when you don't follow a project management methodology, right, or at least the framework, you know, the simplest things, right, uh, like that of PMIs, then everybody, all the stakeholders becomes your enemy, right? You'll fight most of your stakeholders, peers, clients, managers, everyone. Everyone will want just a little bit more, a little sooner, a little better. It wasn't agreed, so why would they not? I would want to, right? You would want to, right? Everyone will start pushing the boundaries simply because the boundaries are paper thin. The details are in the charter, um, or um, if, if the details are not in the charter, if it is not signed, don't do it. But people are like, oh, wait a minute, Dennis, we agreed on a portion on the level, level quality, right? Not Toyota Corolla level. Dennis, come on, and you know, I never said that, right? Is it in the MYM, minutes of the meeting? No, it's not, so prove it, right? I just implied it, I didn't mean it, you know. I thought we were aligned, you know, we had all these uh, pre-alignment meetings and oh, such a sad situation. Now, if this is, with, this is between you and your manager, it will get very ugly, right? I mean, you're gonna have to give up. Um, and it will happen, right? And, and, and you'll have to cave in, you'll give in. Everybody does, not just you, everybody does. You'll say, okay, you know. The moment you say, okay, it's called scope creep. Yeah, that means you, as a project manager, can no longer defend your scope. Yeah, you have to now deliver the 9-11 they ask for. Now, how are you going to do that? Good luck with it. Where, where are you going to find the resources? Everything costs, right? Again, this is what we call um, scope creep. Hmm. hmm. Sometimes the the um, opposite also happens. And um, when you're a junior, or that you're so desperate that you really, really, really need to hang on to your job, you know, you're going through a bad, bad situation, um, and that it is a very, very small project, what you do is now you deliver more than what they asked for, which almost always comes at the cost of more resources too, right? And uh, if they wanted a 9-11, they should have asked for it, and they should have paid for it. They didn't ask for it, they didn't pay for it, you know, that level of quality, I mean. So deliver the Toyota Corolla they asked for, no more than that. This is called gold plating. Hmm? And it's equally dangerous as scope creep. You shouldn't do that. And, um, and you're also given a lot of schedule pressures too. Hey, you know what, that Microsoft client, they're, they're big, man. Come on, you, you know, I, I know um, you said you could finish it in you know, four weeks, but I want it done in two weeks, okay? And then what, you know, <laughs> we said it was a four week work. Now two weeks, and your manager's gonna be like, "Yeah, I don't think so." You know, I know you can do it. Everybody knows you can. Like, look around. Like, everybody's talking about you. You know, you're getting all the praises. You're the best. Go get him, Tiger. And then you're like, "Okay, you know, thanks for your trust, I guess. All right, um, I'll do it." What options do you have at that moment? It's, it, the battle was gone. The, the battle was lost at the beginning when you didn't have the charter and when you didn't fight for signatures, right? Eventually, one of three things is going to happen, and it always happens, um, just a matter of time. It's a triangle um, with equal values. So either you sacrifice some quality through a scope creep, or run out of budget, or experience schedule delays. Uh, right? That's it. I mean, that's the definition of a project failure. You just failed. You just miserably failed. Right? Um, and and um, and most often at that stage, the projects get shelved. The only exception is that if it is a one-man job then maybe you can work 20 hours a day um, to make up the difference. But then uh, you won't, for the next project, you won't have the stamina anymore, right? You'll burn out. Uh, and now you're going to want to quit, right? Why? Why not? I mean, let's think about this. Why wouldn't you quit? Let's look at that life, yeah? Let's make an empathy. Who would want to be part of such a crazy organization, one where you, th where you think, hmm, this is important, you think people put such immense pressure on you, where you constantly fail, who is going to want to fail all the time, right? It destroys your self-confidence. Um, it does. 
Um, I had a brief period when I was a consultant. Like a few of my projects were, were I don't want to say failed, but uh, it was saved at the end and, and it really destroyed my confidence, right? At the end of the day, it is all your doing though. It was my doing too. You didn't follow proper project management steps and as a result, you know, it failed. People are paying you thousands of dollars, right? Could you not pick up a book? Could I not pick up a book to fill in that little bit of knowledge gap that I had? I should have, right? Can you not watch a video, you know, for, for you, like the very, very basics, right? All you need to know, it's, it's there, right? By the way, I have a great video on this, Project Management Fundamentals. It's on YouTube, it's free. Uh, you should watch, I'll, I'll leave the link. Um, everything you need to know about project management, the process groups, the templates, even I'll give you the templates, everything is there. Uh, you should watch it. Now, this was my career early on, right? When I worked for a big four, PwC Consulting. That's what I did. We came in to fix the broken projects, those that are scrapped, those projects that failed, and we get hired to make it a success. Or sometimes the client knew what they are and you know they're not capable of. So they engaged us from the beginning without first failing. Yeah, um, This is what the consultants at Big Four do. You know, EY, KPMG, Deloitte, and again, my personal favorite, PwC Consulting, PricewaterhouseCoopers. So anyway, this is, um, yeah, this is what I did. Now, this is actually what I did. Let me, let me tell you when we engage a new client. Start with the project charter first. Mm -hmm. Then based on what you need and the complexity of the project, then develop plans for all the little process groups, right? And then create a work, uh, WBS, work breakdown structure, right? So you're gonna know it's sort of like really advanced in tree form uh, resource distribution thing. <laughs> thing. Um, nothing advanced, right? It's, uh, it, it would take me less than one week to draft them all. And, 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 and like all the paperwork I need just one week. And then I will, here's the important thing, I will not move a single step until the charter is approved, right? They put a little resistance to stakeholders. Oh, you know, I want this one to be better, that thing to be better. You know, I want it done sooner, you know. Oh, you consultants, we're paying you all this money. You know, I'm sure it's, no, it's like no problem, right? And that's in fact where I almost failed because I gave in way too much. And I was like, yeah, we're consultants. Yeah, we can do better, you know. And then I, I just gave in way too much that I realized that project is no longer implementable, right? So that's, thank God I had uh, really good directors at the time that helped me. Now I never budge. I mean, now I'm no longer a consultant, but after that experience, I never budge because I know when I budge, one of the three things will suffer, you know, budget, scope, or schedule, you know? It's a triangle with equal values, as I said, you know? If you stretch one, the others get affected. Something has to give. And once it is signed and sealed, um, and when I say signed, signed by, by, by all the stakeholders, right? Important stakeholders, starting with the sponsor, one by one, then only I start protecting my scope because my scope is not gonna change, right? And sometimes people um, keep this in mind, don't wanna sign it, you know? They may just email back something like, okay, fine, I read it, yeah? They, they're gonna be very uh, vague. What they're doing is they're trying to create the umbrella of deniability to be used later if something happens that they don't like. Hey, I never approved this, show me. Eh? Don't fall for it, I did, you don't. Okay, print it out, um, go to their office, get their signature, wait there for hours if that's what, what it takes. I mean, I remember once I posted it with DHL to their vacation spot in the middle of Alpine Mountains, right, for my client work. You know, I got it delivered only to name, and then I got the approval from him on the phone when I told him that I was recording the conversation. Um, because I suffered a lot, so I realized how important it is. Do not start until all the stakeholders uh, that are in the charter signed it. And if they don't, apply peer pressure. You know, it's not a game of good boy, yeah? You know, be a bad boy sometimes, that's okay. You know, hey, I want to start, but Roger is not signing it, right? I mean, you're paying us all this money, guys. You know, our daily raise is crazy expensive. I feel sorry, but there's nothing I can do, right? Then what happens? When they know that you don't give in, then everybody starts putting pressure on Roger, and Roger is like eventually falling, and I'll accept it, God damn it, right? I'll accept these specifications, whatever. These are real life stories. I mean, like hundreds of times I've experienced this. And when you do these things, you go with concrete steps. You will never see pushbacks, yeah? Like throughout the project implementation, you know, it'll be silky smooth because the scope is clear. 
right? There's a clear responsibility, assignment matrix, right? Everybody knows who is doing what, no surprises. That's the key to a smooth project. That's how you make friends. All your colleagues then can actually become friends, right? At that point, you just have to deliver what you promised. Not worse, but also not better, yeah? Remember the scope creep and the goal plating, yeah? Just what you promised. And at that point, you need to be like a bulldozer, right? Once that thing is signed, there's no stopping you. Get out of my way, yeah? Um, just a quick parenthesis here, by the way. Project management is a, is a cross-field practice, yeah? Meaning whether you're in finance or in accounting or PR and sales marketing, software engineering, it's everywhere. Even doctors use project management. So it's not just for engineering or software development. Everybody runs projects, it's just that sometimes people don't know it. All right, so once it is drafted, signed and sealed by all the stakeholders, as I said, I will not change a single thing, anything throughout the execution, the implementation, right? That's, uh, that's when, when we're busy with getting shit done, getting stuff done, right? If they want to change, if an incredible out of this world opportunity just, you know, uh, came up, or that we realized that uh, we made a mistake in planning, and then only I can make a change, but again, only through an official change request, and that has to be documented. That CR, the change request, has to be approved by the sponsor and the stakeholders, right? And, and to be honest, I usually become a pain in the butt. I make it very difficult to get it approved. So I discourage others from trying to change my scope in the future, because that's what happens. You know, you don't want to set an example. Uh, because people always try, you know, let's wait for the next version. Let me finish this. No signature, no change. And a change requires more resources. I want more money, schedule, budget, whatever, you know. See how simple things are. All you have to do is just follow the basics and stand your ground when you need to. And most of it, it'll be at the beginning, right? What makes a great project manager with 100% success rate, 90%, isn't the knowledge in advanced project management. In all honesty, I couldn't even run a really advanced billion dollar project anyway. I, I would be buried in it, right? I don't have the skills for it. Um, huge, like those guys, you know, the huge oil and gas projects you know, thousands of pages of plans for every single process group. I can't do that, aerospace projects, not for me. But luckily, and quite fortunately for me and for 90% of individuals, maybe more, and most of you, you never have to deal with such complex project management methodologies ever in your career, yeah? Um, it will never happen for you. I mean, I've had more than 200 projects, all complex ones, complex enough, but the basics, the fundamentals just solved everything. And once again, I want to emphasize on this one, um, you also make a lot of friends, you know, with people you work with. They're never in a shock, so there's very little conflict of interest. They know what is coming, you know, they always know what is next. You get the bad blood out of the way at the beginning in planning and approval stages, right? Or, or phases if it's a larger project. So you just become friends very quickly. By the way, it would be uh, great if you share this video uh, on LinkedIn and um, you can do that now, just pause the video. And if you do, feel free to search me and add me to your connections. Um, I'll be happy to connect with you if you want to connect with me, uh, no problem. Now I want to talk about what will now happen to you hmm, when you take the right steps, when you learn the just fundamentals of project management. When you learn and apply even just the basics, hmm, the, the fundamentals of project management, your endeavors at work, your projects, all become a success, right? Most of them. Soon enough, important stakeholders, you know, your managers, 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 right? They realize your achievements, and when they do, they test you. They will give you a very, very hard project. It's a good thing, yeah? Don't complain about it. It's a good thing, they trust you, yeah? Your managers want to see, your managers want to see what you're really capable of, right? How fast you can go, you can go how high you can climb, right? If you're a Ferrari, what, what good is it for you to go at 60 kilometers an hour, right? And imagine you pass that test, what happens? That's when you start enjoying all the good things that a corporate career has to offer. Much, much higher salaries, 10x the job security, multiple promotions, right? And you know what, above all, above all the materialistic things, you'll feel like a superstar, right? Because internally you will know you're a winner, man. Yeah, I, I mean, that's an amazing feeling, or woman, sorry. Um, then, then imagine being treated at work like the superstar you are. It's an amazing feeling. I know, I mean, I felt that, you know, it, it, it was great. And, and to get all of these benefits, what do you need to do? A Harvard MBA? No, no, it doesn't even cost much money. Maybe none, yeah? 
just the super basics, fundamentals of project management. This is what people call a low-hanging fruit. Yeah. Okay, now I want to talk about another low-hanging fruit. Um, now, you learned a valuable lesson so far, and, and hopefully one that will just will give you a different branch in your future, right? Um, and now I'd like you to listen to me for two minutes on LIG. Okay, fair enough? Because even if it is not for you, it may be for someone you care about. At least find out what it is. Now, if you want to have a better job, a better career, yeah, perhaps, I want you to come and join my LIG program. It is mine. I'm not promoting anyone else. Yeah? Over 7,000 people joined uh, since 2017, and we have achieved over 80% success rate. That is a remarkable success rate. 80%. Right? What does that mean? It means 80% of the joiners, thousands of people, doubled or even tripled their salary and upgraded their living standards, all because of the strategies I thought um, in the program. Right? Because really, if you think the best way to find a job is online advertisement, job boards, trust me, it is the worst. It is like, just stay away from them. You know, they'll only ruin your self-confidence. I want to teach you just step by step what to do. Right? Hold your hand. And, and, and show you, right? Because what you're learning in LIG is the only way, in my opinion, to find a quality job, a quality career, anywhere around the world, right? Even if you wanna to move to another country. And LIG is a charitable activity for us, right? We don't use any of the profits. That's why I'm so passionate about it. My real job, my real passion in life, at least after I concluded my management consulting career is, it's funny, but it's uh, base metals and also, you know, nickel, silver, uh, and precious metals too, and gold, and I don't want to get into details, but I also consult the governments and all, and um, what matters is all the profits from LIG goes to support young Nigerian girls. It's a cause that hit me so, so deeply when I visited Lagos for a client project almost 10 years ago. And uh, since then, I supported a lot of young girls with their education and, and life expenses. Um, and most of them, you will actually see them commenting below. Uh, my videos. They're, they're almost in their uh, early, th uh, early 20s now. It's been a while. Now we have a new class of students coming up, so that's why I decided to shoot this video, um, talk about LIG after almost, I think, a three-month absence. Guys, this is when capitalism works, uh, works the best. If you need help, I help you. You pay me, I pay them, right? And Twitter, you and I, we save them from the worst kind of predators that I think. Human predators, right? They're everywhere and, and they, they, they look for the weak. This way, everybody wins. And, and if you don't get a better job, you know what? No problem. I'll refund you. Yeah. I want you to succeed. No risk for you at all, right? And uh, the program also comes with a direct access to me for all your career questions for a lifetime, for my lifetime at least, right? And um, all right. So. Thank you for listening and uh, I hope to see you in LIG. Otherwise, I will see you here probably in a month or two or worst case three. Thank you.